In this section, we will learn how to use a horizontal curvature diagram to create the individual elements that will make up our horizontal regression alignment. This tool creates a single horizontal geometry element that is a best fit to a set of regression points. Best fit means that the orthogonal projection from the element to the regression point is minimized. This tool generates either linear or circular elements. The length of the element will be all regression data that can be project orthogonally onto the element. This tool can work both on the plan view, which is the regression line, or on the horizontal curvature view, which is the horizontal curvature diagram. While it is possible to create a geometry in parts using both the regression line and the curvature line, when you switch from one view to the other, the tool should be restarted. This tool creates a, a regression rule between the created geometry line and the regression line. This link allows dynamic regression analysis that is changing the points used in the analysis of that element. Depending on where you use the regression tool, either on plan or curvature diagram, you can modify the regression as follows. If you use the diagram to create the elements, you can use the manipulators on the regression box for that element. You can also view updated SLUs, standard errors uh, via the property values of the particular element. Right, from the ribbon menu, we're going to go to the rail tools and we're going to go to horizontal regression and we're going to use the pull down and select single horizontal regression. And we're prompted to select either the regression line in the plan view or the curvature line. I'm going to select uh, the curvature line. On the dialog box, at the top, the geometry is set to automatic. Um, automatic means the software is going to decide what type of element is going to be generated. You can choose line if you think the, uh, the regression points in the horizontal curvature diagram represent a line. Or if you think they represent an arc, you can choose the arc option. We're going to use automatic. The feature definition, we're going to leave as John baseline. And with name prefix, we'll just leave the name prefix as John BL for the particular elements. When we select the points in the diagram, we will get on the horizontal curvature diagram box here, a maximum slew and our standard error. Now, you don't have to select the whole length of the option that you think represents a line or a curve. So, to begin with, what we're going to do, I'm going to select along this first line here. So, I'm just going to briefly just window in. So I can see those first set of points. And on the end of my curse, I'm prompted for the first point. So the first point, I'm going to select just outside the range of zero. OK, so that means so I can collect the data for the point at zero. So that's going to be my first data point. I'm now going to move to the right. And you can see the line that's been displayed there. It's like a red dash line is the point selection control line. So this tells the software where you're starting and where you're ending with your selection. I'm now going to go about as far as station 800. And again, that's going to be my second data point. Right, I'm now going to stretch vertically so I can go up or down 
to select the points. Now I'm not going to include this spike here and that spike there. So my curvature diagram will look of the point selected like that and you'll see the maximum slough on the diagram box is 71 mil. So I'm going to accept that point selection. I'm now going to use my element selection tool and in the profile view I'm going to select this box and I'm going to go to the context sensitive toolbar and go to the properties of the box and you can see here it's telling me the standard error and the maximum slope. It's also telling me the location of the first point, the location of the second point and the envelope that I've created here. That's the depth of the envelope. If I just click back in the screen and then select it again, you can see I've got some manipulators here. So I can increase the, or the size of the box or decrease the size of the box should I need to do that. And I'm just going to now deselect. Again, I'm going to use my element selection tool to select the box. And again, I'm going to go to its properties. And I'm going to change the depth of the envelope to 0.2. And again, if I go back to its properties, I've slightly improved the maximum slew. And the maximum slew displays the offset of the point that is furthest away from the created element. The standard error displays the standard error of the regression analysis. The standard error of the regression provides the measure of the typical distance that the data falls from the regression line, representing how tightly the element fits to the regression data. Values close to zero indicate a tight fit. We're now going to proceed to our next element, which is this element here. So again, I'm going to go back to single horizontal regression. I'm going to select my curvature line. And again, I'm going to use the method automatic. And I'm going to start these points at station 1000. So roughly going to go from here. I'm going to use my regression control line and go to roughly about station 1610. And you can see there, I just increased the magnification using my roll key on my mouse. And I'm roughly going to go about here. And I'm going to include all these points. So I'm just going to make my box uh, roughly about that size. So all the points are included. And again, accept the selection. And again, you can see here, the maximum error is quite good there. It's roughly about 0 0.004 of a millimeter that's because all the points lie very close to uh, the regressed line so we're now going to move away and i'm now going to look at these points down here and again i'm going to use my first point selection to roughly go from about station 1860 and I'm going to go again with my regression control line all the way through to roughly about station 220 and again I'm going to expand the box and select all the points and the last set of points that I'm going to regress <clears throat> again is this line here and again we're going to set it to automatic again I'm just going to window in slightly and we're going to go from station 2500 which is about here 
again go through all the way to station 3000. I could go all the way to the end, but I'm only doing a, I'm only doing three kilometers of this track. And again, I'm including all the points. And again, that's now accepted the creation of those four elements within my design. I could at any point revisit those boxes and change them, edit them, but I'm quite happy with them at the moment. And I'm just going to close out the uh, regression view. So that particular box I'm removing, and you can see now there are my four elements. If again I go back to home, go to level display, and just take off the display of the regressed line, which was the white line in the background, you can see here is my four elements. If I again use my element selection tool to select that element, go to the properties, you can see it gives you the information about the maximum slew, uh, the standard error. Also, if I was to select it again, I can go to the report box and that will tell me what type of element it is. And you can see here it's a circular curve. It's a left handed curve and that's the total length of the curve. So any of these boxes, sorry, any of these elements, you can get the information about. The next step in this process is to add the spirals. So we're going to learn in this particular exercise how to add the spirals to the elements that we have generated and create a single horizontal alignment by joining all the elements together because currently they are just single elements. The creation of the complex geometry can be done before the spirals are introduced into the alignment. The benefit of this method is that the link to the regression rules is removed, which means that the alignment can be edited using the civil geometry tools. If you add the spirals first and then create the complex geometry, the regression rules have to be removed manually and then the civil geometry rules added afterwards. We're going to create the complex geometry first. So can we go back to the rail tools? And we're going to go back to the regression ribbon. And we're going to choose this complex by element. I'm going to put the gap as 325. I'm going to locate the first element, as I say, make sure it's pointing to the right, and you'll see all the elements are highlighted. So accept the complex chain. The gap between the elements is not populated with any elements at all, because all we've done is created one alignment that makes up that complex chain. The next thing that we have to do is join these elements with spirals and to do that we're going to go to spirals and we're going to use the complex spiral between we're going to leave create horizontal rules on feature definition John baseline and the name for this track we're going to call this track main and again all I have to do now is identify the center line and all the gaps are now joined with spirals. So if I go to element selection here and just window into a specific selection, you will see there are the yellow spirals that make up the track. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.